Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 5. I'm going to get into this. This is the third installment on this passage. Lord willing, it'll be the last one on this passage um, that I'm giving today. If you've missed the other two, I encourage you to go back and watch them. They'll be on uh, Facebook for all eternity because what goes on the internet stays on the internet and uh, so they'll be on there and soon they'll be on uh, the church website if they're not already on there now okay Joshua chapter 1 starting at verse 5 there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, food, cook, Get to cooking. For within three days you shall pass over this Jordan. Three days you shall pass over this. Three days. So we're going to dwell on that for a little bit today. Not a whole lot, but, but a little bit. Because there's a significance with that number three, isn't there? And if you're a good Bible scholar, there's a great significance. And you should be already jumping ahead with some thoughts, right? Some? Just some, right, Cody? Just some. He's up to something. Yeah, he's up to something. All right. To go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. <clears throat> so, a couple weeks ago, we started in this passage, and we spent basically the whole first week talking about, as I was, so will I be. Has that statement ever come back up to, in your thoughts? Has that ever come back up in your, in your thinking over the last couple of weeks? As I was, so will I be. As I was with Moses, as I was with you back then, so will I be with you now. I am the great I am. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. When, when I saw you through that trial then, I'll see you through this trial now, and I'll see you through the trial tomorrow. Tomorrow. I am working with you then. I'm working with you now. I'm working with you tomorrow. In other words, my presence will be with you as long as you're trusting with me. As I was, so will I be. So will I be. Last week we covered three of the first six points. First of all, God is talking to the people the people. God cares about the people. God cares about you. God loves you. He cares about you. And so he's talking to you. You know, a lot of times when we read Old Testament scripture and when we read the scripture, we think, oh, well, that's for them. 
That's for someone else. That's for the elite. That's for Bible scholars. That's for someone else. That's not for me. That doesn't apply for me. That, that applies for that historical time. This word is for you. God is speaking to you. As I was, so will I be applies to you. God is for you. This message is for you. This word is for you. This scripture is for you. It wasn't just for Joshua and for the Israelites. This message is for you. Everything written in this book right here is for you. All of the promises that are written in this book is for you. You, if you open the book and start studying it, God is talking to you. He's not just talking to me for me to bring it to you. He's bringing it to you personally. Yeah. Open the book. Number two, he, 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 he talks about the promise. And the promise isn't the promised land. The promised land that we talked about last week is the camouflage. The camouflage is the promised land. The promise is, I will be with you. That's his presence. I will be with you until the end of the age, the scripture says. I will be with you. As long as we're trusting him, he will be with He walks with us and he talks with us and he tells me, I am, I am his own. I, he's with me. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He walks me through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil for thy rod and thy staff they comfort me he's with me that's his promise third is the priority the devotion to get into the word to get into the word to study the word you don't know about the promises of God unless you open the word the word says obey the word if you love me God says keep my commandments Jesus said it right there. If you love me, keep my commands. We walk around saying, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Do you know his commandments? Do you know what he's asked us to do? The only way we can do it is by getting into the word and studying the word. Whatever you value, you make time for. What did you make time for this week? Oh, y'all got quiet. You quit the encouragement. He tells you, I want you to get into my word and observe my law as part of your daily routine. Just like you eat that bag of chips every day. I want you to open up the word and eat my word. So in order for you to possess, I want you to prioritize and get into my word every day, every day. All right, let's move on. Number four, that, that was last week. Let's move on. Number four, what this really is about is the purpose of God, the purpose of God. Moses died, but God's purpose didn't. Moses died, but God's purpose didn't. So when he says, as I was, so will I be. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I'm going to do the same thing through you that I would have done through Moses. Because it wasn't about personality. It was about purpose. Now this, I'm getting, to, getting ready to lay on you, is really cool. Okay? Are you ready? Hey, you you got to be ready to hear this. And it's probably a good thing that, that we're doing this at the start of, of, a, of a service instead of the middle of a message. So, so if I had continued on to number four at the end of the message last week, you probably would have been tired and not been able to handle it. Okay? All right? You understand what I'm saying? because it would have been too much. All right, so it's probably good that we're starting fresh today. 
to accomplish his purpose, God will use anybody. Think about it. So, so, there are, so there are those who think it's a few little blessed people. And if you're not in God's clique, God can't use you. <clears throat> Wrong. Thanks for playing. Try again next time. God, listen to this, God used hookers. God used a donkey. God used animals. God used fish. God doesn't care what it is. Because when God gets ready to accomplish something in order to get it done, he'll use anybody. He'll use idolaters. Ruth was a Moabitess. She didn't even know who God was, but when God gets ready to accomplish his purpose, he'll snatch anybody from anywhere in order to get things done. If you want to survive, get into his purpose. Oh, let me say that again. If you want to survive, get into his purpose. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the purpose of God. Whenever you get into the purpose of God, God will protect you. To protect his purpose, as Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God said, if you get into my purpose, I'll make it work out, out all right. If you get into my purpose, I'll fight your enemies off of you. I'll whip anybody who stands against you. If you do what I tell you to do, if I know I can count on you to do my purpose, your enemies become my enemies. Your battles become my battles. I'll drive back your diseases. I'll heal your body. If you're in my purpose, I'll strengthen you in your old age. Well, no, Pastor, you, you don't have any Bible for that. Well, yes, I do. King Hezekiah was getting ready to die, and the prophet came and told him he was going to die. Told him to get his house in order. Because he was going to die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. And he told God, if I die, the grave cannot praise you. God said, if you praise me, I'll add 15 years to your life. Old church, get into the purpose. Get in the purpose of God. Get in something bigger than you. Get in something that's not about you. Get in something that's about not about what you had in mind. Get in something where you're willing to sacrifice because the safest place is in the purpose of God. I'm alive because of the purpose of God. I've seen enemies run because I was in the purpose of God. God didn't help me because I was good. God helped me because I was obedient. Get in the purpose of God. Oh, 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 let me ask you. How, how many feel like you're in the purpose this morning? How many, how, how many people are going to be more intentional about, get, about being in the purpose of God after this morning? You see, we have to come to a place to where we're willing to be used anytime, anywhere, any place. I've been in meetings that had nothing to do with pastoring. I know that's hard to... To, to think about as a pastor, right? But I've been in meetings where it's had nothing to do about pastoring. We, we've been sitting talking about business, talking about finances. I was in one meeting, and the person helping me told me that they were not on their game that day. Their mind was not on their work that day. They had just lost a family member. Now, if you have been sitting there, maybe your heart would go out for that person. My heart went out for that person. My heart broke for them immediately. And as we were talking, I asked them some questions about their family member. I asked them if, if, they, if they had a moment, if I could pray with them. 
Because at my core, I'm two things. I'm a believer, and I'm a pastor. That's my purpose. That's my purpose. Most people are coming in doing business with you, and most people come in and complain about service or want something from you, I told them. But when I do something, but I want to do something for you. I want to pray for you right here and now, and if it would be all right with you. People, you see, people are so self-absorbed that they don't see that you just lost your family member. You're to put on this strength for them, but they don't see that you get weak just like them. And this person, when I was talking to them, they burst into tears. But we stopped and I prayed for them because that is my purpose. Mind you, we were talking about business. We were talking about my finances. We were talking about a problem that I was having. We were talking about some possibilities, but I never let the finances or the business of my life drive me away from my purpose. Because I, I, if I have to leave my purpose to get the promise, then you can keep the promise. I will walk away in a hot minute. I, I can walk away and still be waving back. There's no check that can hold me. Nothing else can hold me. I'm a grown man. I've got a grown God who does grown stuff. And I don't have to go through you to get nothing. If God's getting ready to bless me, he's already, already proven it to me. Amen. In 56 years of my life, don't, don't let anything drive you away from your purpose. Because the purpose of God is already blessed. When you're in the purpose of God, it's already blessed. All that praying we're doing, trying to get God to bless our plan, stop it. Get in His plan because it's already blessed. You don't have to stay up and go on a fast. God's plan is already blessed. God's plan is His purpose. Stop trying to draw God into your agenda. Get into His agenda because He will protect which pertains unto Him. Let me tell you why you're here this morning. Let me tell you why you logged on this morning. It's because of the purpose of God. And we, and when you're in the purpose of God, you ought to be knocking on the door. You ought to be knocking on the door, trying to do something for God. You ought to be saying, oh, y'all are, are going to let me do something for God. I'm telling you right now, y'all are going to let me do something for God. I don't care what I got to sign, what I got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to be involved in the do something for God committee. Put me on the do something for God committee right now. Put me on the committee because when I get on the committee... Arthritis can't hold me. Sickness can't hold me. COVID can't hold me. Death can't hold me. MS can't hold me. Leukemia can't hold me. Special needs can't hold me. I mean, after all, you look at a whole row of special needs over here, and they've been used by God over and over and over and over and over again because they're walking in the purpose of God. Special needs can't hold me. Haters can't hold me. Witches can't hold me. Warlocks can't hold me. You know why? Because I'm blessed when I'm walking in the purpose of God. You can't curse what's already blessed. I'm blessed because I'm in His purpose. I'm blessed because I'm in His will. I'm blessed because I showed up when He told me to show up and I said what He told me to say. Oh, let me tell you something this morning. God is getting you ready for something bigger when you walk in His purpose. Oh, now let's see here. Number one, we had the people... We have the promise, we have the priority, we have the purpose. Number five, we have the provision. Now normally, when you talk about the provision of God, it's normally about God providing. 
This time, it's not. God has been providing for 40 years all throughout the wilderness. The manna has fallen every morning with the dew every morning. God baked the bread and it fell right in front of the tent. And they reached out and grabbed it. Remember? That was week one. They reached out and grabbed it. They ate it. That's why I brought it up a couple of weeks ago. So you could remember the blessing that God bakes for you is always within arm's reach. Give us this day our daily stretch. Right? Some more, some less. So don't compare yourself with each other. Because God is just, but he's not fair. Now, I knew so I'd get some looks with that one. Fair is, everybody in here gets two. Just is, is that since Pastor Watts has 18 kids, he gets more. More capacity, more provision. That's just. But she can say, that's not fair. She doesn't have any kids. It's not fair, but it's just. You're mad at God because he's not fair. God didn't promise to be fair. He promised to be just. So to the big tent people who had a lot of need, more bread fell because they had capacity. People who had little need got little bread. That wasn't fair, but it was just. They had had 40 years of God handing out the bread. Does that all that make sense now? No, amen. So it must not make sense yet. They had had 40 years of God handing out the bread. In our text, since they had been in the wilderness, God says, I'm through handing you the bread. Prepare your food. This is the first time he made the promised land generation prepare. He said, I'm through giving you freebies. Prepare your food. Now, this is a generation who never had to cook. Uh, you 18 now. Time for you to move out. Go cook. Oh, but you didn't teach me how to cook. Figure it out. Prepare your food. I'm so glad my mama taught me how to boil hot dogs. <laughs> and make peanut butter and chocolate chip sandwiches so I wouldn't starve. She also taught me how to do laundry so I'd have clean clothes. Because you know in that accident, you're supposed to have clean underwear on. Okay? So I'd have both. A full stomach and clean underwear on. Prepare your food. This generation who had never cooked, all the bread was prepared. The manna had ceased. Joshua 5, 12, the manna had ceased. When the manna ceases, it's a sign you must prepare. Listen, the church for years has been spoon-fed. Generation, it's time to prepare. When the manna ceases, it's a sign you must prepare. It's not a sign you can't eat. When it ceases to be easy, it doesn't mean that it ceases to be. It just means in the course of providing, God changes methodology. That which comes easy is always temporal. It's like honeymoons. That which comes easy is always temporal. The marriage... If marriage were honeymoons, that that's right. Look at me. Look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Sooner or later, you have to get your hands in it. You have to put some sweat in it. You have to put some effort in it. Just ask Richard. For him and Bonnie to be married as long as they did, their whole marriage was not a honeymoon. I can guarantee it. Right, Richard? 
There was some sweat. There was some effort. There was some work. Richard, Richard paid the bills. There was some sweat. There was some effort. There was some work. God said, I'm making you prepare your victuals because you're closer than you've ever been before. Get your hands in it. I've been handing you stuff that you didn't have to put your hands in. Now you have to get your hands in it. I'm going to feed you, but you've got to get involved in it. You've got to get your hands in it. Prepare your victuals. Right, because I'm getting ready to move you. I'm getting ready to shift you. Prepare your victuals because you have three days to get ready for this shift. Sunday to Monday, Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday. Three days to get ready. Prepare your victuals. In three days, you're going to cross into something like you've never crossed into before. In three days. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've heard that three days before. Haven't you heard that three days before? Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up. Jesus went into the grave, death, burial, and resurrection. Three days. There was three days there. Hosea said, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Oh, there's something about God in three days. He raised up Jesus on the third day. And Jesus is the living bread. Wait, wait a minute. Let me try that again. Jesus is the living bread. Get your hands in it. Thomas comes in and says, unless I get my hands in it, unless I put my finger where the nails pierced his hand and I put my hand in his side, I won't believe. Get your hands in it. See, you can go to church all you want to, but until you get your hands into Jesus, until you prepare your victuals, until you get your hands into a relationship with Jesus Christ and get your hands into the Word of God, you're not going to grow. All you're going to do is become to a social club. But get your hands in it. Prepare your victuals, because in three days, I'm going to bring you into it. Now, this is the kind of message for people who are on the cusp of change. There's a reason that you had to be here over the past few weeks, because everything in your life is getting ready to shift, and God's getting ready to bring you into a place where you have never been. Over the last two, almost three years, we've had a change in our lives, and we've been wondering where we're going to go, and what's next, and what's going to happen. Listen, God's getting ready for us to move on out and minister to people and 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 redeem people and share the love of Christ with people who need the Lord depression is on a high anxiety is on a high and they need Jesus Christ the answer for our world today, the answer for inflation today, the answer for violence today, the answer for racism today is not more policies and not more Washington and not more presidents and not more Congress. The answer is Jesus Christ. Oh, prepare your victuals. Get your hands in it. God, God is getting ready to bring you into a place you have never been, a state where you have never been. And, and it is in part, and it is in part because Moses, my servant, is dead. And you have been destabilized. And in order to become dependent, so, so the people, the things that, that, that you would normally depend on has gone. And now God has got you to himself. And he says, prepare your victuals. The provision of God has now been placed in the hands of the believer. It's up to you. This is not to be ignored, church. 
God says, I'm putting it in your hands. I'm, I'm through dropping stuff at your tent. I'm putting it in your hands. Get your hands in it. Get involved in it. I want to feel your DNA in it. I want to feel your fingerprints in the bread. Get your hands in it. Feel it. Touch it. Punch it. Pulverize it. Knead it like dough. Get your hands in everything you're about to eat because you're getting ready to cross into another level, another dimension. Oh, when you get your hands in the bread, God will shift you into the next dimension. You will grow like you've never grown before. The life that seems so out of control and destabilized will shift you and be stable and become the solid rock that cannot be moved. Get your hands in it. Get your hands in your vision. Get your hands on the glory. Get your hands on the word. Get your hands on the power. I'm not going to do it for you the way I used to do it for you, God says. So stop crying for me to do it, for me to do what I used to do. You're in love with yesterday. Your yesterday is over. Let it go. I'm not going to do what I used to do again. I'm going to do a new thing. We're not putting new wine in old wine skins. The former things have passed away and behold, all things become new. Stop craving for what, for that which is over. Reach for what is ahead. This is not about others. This is not about depending on others to fix it for you. This is not about avoiding the issues that we've been avoiding in our lives. You have to get your hands in it yourself. You have to get involved with it. Some are wondering who God is if he doesn't do what he used to do. He doesn't have to do what he used to do. He's going to, he's going to do something new in your life. Get your hands in it. Prepare your victuals. For in three days you will cross this Jordan. I'm going to make you another kind of person. In three days you will never wander again. You won't be nomadic here and there and everywhere and unstable. In three days, I will stabilize you. I will organize you. I will bring a new deal out of the old deal. In three days, I'm getting ready to shift. Number six, the possession. Getting ready to shift, and we're going to cross over into, into the promised land to possess. He says, I've given you the land to possess it which is an oxymoron. It's an oddity. Because if you've given it to me, why do I have to possess it? God says, I've given it to you by permission, but you have to take it by force. I have given you the land to possess it. You're not just going to shout about it. You're not just going to sing about it. You're not just going to dream about it. You're going to possess it. You have got to prepare your food, the food you need to eat for what's in front of you. And it is different from the food that you needed to eat for what was behind you. In order to be ready for what God is going to do, you're going to have to change your diet for it. Now, I'm not talking about physical food now, all right? You have to change your diet for it, what you have time for, who you listen to, what you let feed you, what you let pour into your spirit. All of that has to shift for this. This ain't that. I've given you the land, God says. Properly read this, it, it, it says, I've given you the land, take it. Well, how am I going to take it? God says, I told you, 
I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you when you take it. I will be with you when you take I will be with you when you possess it. You will win every battle. Not because you're strong, but because I'm with you. The only battles Israel lost was when they disobeyed God. So his punishment was their failure. His reward was their winning. If you obey me, I'll make you a winner out of, I'll make a winner out of a loser. I'll turn your life completely around. Think about that. If you obey my word, I'll make a winner out of a loser. Woo, bless the Lord. I'll turn your mourning into dancing. I'll give you beauty for ashes. I'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I will lift you where it matters most, most of all, on the inside. I, I won't just give you pretty stuff. I'll beautify the meat with salvation. I will make you pretty where it counts. I, I won't just make you look good. I'll make you good. I will restore you. Everything that your enemies have taken out of you, I will pour back into you. The joy that has left you, I'll restore joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace that is that you don't have in your life, I will give you a peace that passes all understanding. You, 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 the things that the enemy has taken from you, you'll be able to storm the gates of hell and take them back. Those gold shields that used to hang up in the temple, you'll be able with the authority of Jesus Christ to storm the gates of hell and take those gold shields back and put them back on the temple walls. You'll be able to do things, greater things than I was able to do, Jesus says, because I'm no longer with you, but now I'm living in you. The power of the resurrection is there. Go possess the land. Don't just walk in it, but take it. It's yours. Possess the land. That's your purpose. That's the message to the people. And the promise is, I'm with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. As I was, so shall I be. That's the promise. The priority, I'm putting him first. He, he loved the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. He's, he's first in my life. The priority is, I'm going to meet him early in the morning. Well, maybe not early for some of you, but I'm going to meet him first in the morning and I'm going to spend time with him in the morning and I'm going to pray with him in the morning and I'm going to talk with him in the morning and I'm going to commune with him in the morning and I'm going to study his word and I'm going to read his word and listen to what he has to say to me and follow the instruction of his word and I'm going to make that a priority in my life before I do anything else. I'm spending time with my God because I need that instruction. I need that direction. I need I need him. I need to know what he wants me to do, where he wants me to go. I need to know the battle plan to take Jericho today. I need to know the battle plan to take AI today. I need to know the battle plan to defeat the giants in the mountains today. I need to know the battle plan to take the land that he's given me. I need to know to the battle plan and where he wants me to place my foot that he says wherever I place my foot that land is mine I need to spend time with him and when I don't spend time with him I know that my day is not going to be what it should be so I'm making it a priority and I'm going to step into the purpose of why I'm here he's called me he's called each one of you you have a purpose you're not here to just take up air and take up space on this earth. You have a purpose. God has called each one of you. You have a, you have a ministry. You have a purpose. That purpose may be to just pray. 
That purpose may be to scrub toilets. That purpose may be to take in special needs kids. That purpose may be to come and sweep the carpet of the church. That purpose may be to come wipe down chairs and pray for the people that sit in those chairs. That purpose may be to call people and encourage them and and let them know that they are loved and let them know that they're missed. That's a purpose in the kingdom of God. You may have a purpose to be an encourager and that when you go up to a to a counter at a fast food restaurant and you see one love written on their t-shirt and you start talking to them hey i know about a jesus christ who is the one love and he loves you with all of his heart he came to die for you so that you can know the one love the one true love that could be your purpose Oh, but wait a minute, I, 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 I start stuttering when I start talking to strangers. That's all right, I, 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 I do too. But the promise is, I'm with you. As I was, so shall I be. The provision, the provision provision prepare your victuals i placed it in your hands it's there everything that you need is there it's there you see your word just the word it's there everything that you need to say is here everything that you need to know is here i've placed it in your hands prepare the victuals everything that you need for direction everything that you need for life is here it's it's right here i've pro- i've provided it for you all you need to do is reach out and take it It's right here. Prepare it. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. I I die. My son died on the cross. The blood was shed. He's, He's knocking at the door of your heart right now. If you don't know him as Savior, reach out and open the door. It's right there. It's placed in your hands. The decision is placed in your hands. The decision to follow the purpose is placed in your hands. It's right there, the provision. Possession, possession. Take the land. Take the land. Take the land. What are you going to do? What are you going to do today? Well, that's your choice. You see, I know what I'm doing. As for me and my house, We will serve the Lord. What will you do? Let's pray.